And it's really good for young Dharma students, you know, to do some kind of heavy work around the house. So you can volunteer for Dharma Mountain. <laughs> they have lots of hard jobs here. And it's a big part of Dharma practice, okay? And you don't get spoiled. You don't get soft, you know. You become a hardcore Dharma person if you clean a lot of toilets and, you know. My special job was to clean up after ceremonies. And it's amazing how dirty Buddhists can be at a ceremony. <laughs> and uh, they used to eat all of the Lama Chupa and then they would leave. And there'd be 200 dirty dishes and there'd be cakes all over the floor and many years, 25 years. And so I think it's a, a valuable part of Dharma training. But, you know, I was the only Westerner in his home, so uh, I can't do that with you guys. Uh, there's no time. Okay? Anyway. It's good to learn to clean toilets. Okay. Uh, I think at Three Jewels they do pretty good. I mean, people help, right? Pretty well. Yeah, it's a culture. There is. There is a direct correlation. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, meditation number 17. I have to keep doing some, okay? And I'll do more book after the retreat. Uh, meditation number 17 is... Uh, the mind goes automatically to it. And uh, part of taking refuge is to keep uh, pictures and statues and books around your house, okay? I like Gelsey's house because it's a very Buddhist house. There, everywhere under everything there's some Buddhist thing. There's pictures everywhere. There's a Tsongkhapa on the heater. Little so if you look close you can see Tsongkhapa, he's in the heater. You know, and uh, I was like, hi, I can see you. You know, and uh, you know, so you know, uh, there's a part in the Long Rim that's, uh, you know, we're neo Tsongkhapians. We don't, I mean, we'd rather go to a DCI event than go to a temple and, and wave incense, right? But it's a very good custom to keep uh, lots of Buddhas in your house, okay? So, Mr. Wu, there's no room to sit in his house because there's all Buddhas. You know, and uh, that's a good habit, okay? Jewish people have a custom uh, to put a special thing at the door, right? What's it called? I don't know. Huh? Mizuta? Mizuta. 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 Anyway, they have this thing. And... Uh, I decided I want a Buddhist one, so I got a little Buddha from uh, Sarnath, where Buddha first taught. You gave it to me, or no? Candy gate, no. Xiaoping. You gave me in Varanasi, a little Buddha. Who gave it to me? From uh, where Buddha first taught. Then I carved a hole in my, near my door, and I glued it in there, you know? So every time I come and go, I have to see this Buddha's looking at me, you know? In the Lam Rim, it says that's a very good custom, okay? Why? Uh, when you have trouble, you will think about Buddhas, okay? So, generally, it's important. Jewish people have another good custom. Uh, you're not allowed to make a statue of God, right? Like, in their temple, there's no images, because they say it's impossible to make a picture of a holy being. Not possible. So you're not allowed to try. But, and I used to think, you know, I don't need all these Buddhas around, you know, I just have to clean them, right? So I'm like, I don't need them around. I, I used to have them. They got dusty. My Lama said clean them. I said I don't want to. Then, 
you know, I decided I just won't have any, you know. But uh, what the Lam Rim says about refuge, it's part of refuge to keep Buddhas in your house, okay? It could be Tara, it could be Jinkan Yujamo, it could be anything, okay? But just keep them where you have to see them. I put one on the refrigerator because that's my real altar. <laughs> you know, I'm always going there for refuge. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I put one of those uh, magnetic one on the, on the refrigerator. It's always looking at me. Okay, so it's a custom. So the idea is, and if you have books all over your house, Buddhist books, you know, it's a tradition to keep some above your head where you walk into your house on the inside, up above the door. And there's a custom to keep them above your head where you sleep, okay? And it's a custom not to keep them where your feet are pointing on your bed, okay? So not at the end of your bed. Uh, no books or Buddha pictures where the feet of your, when you sleep, your feet are facing them. Put them on the other side, near your head. And uh, maybe some place where you can see them when you fall asleep, right? So, I have some images, you know, in my bedroom, and there, I have Tony Lama's collected works above my head. I figure that's the best thing. And uh, then I have all the Buddhas around that, and Tsongkhapa's right there. And, okay, so, it's part of going for refuge to keep images around you all the time. Because when you die, it will stay in your mind, okay? It will stay in your mind. When you get in a car accident, when you get cancer, when you're lying on the bed in the hospital the last time, your mind will go to that, you see? Your mind will go to what you saw your whole life, okay? So keep lots of things around. It's not a Buddhist home decorating, okay? And it's not a competition. My Buddha is b more valuable than your Buddha, you know. Mine is silver, mine is gold, yours is just wood, you know. It's not like that, okay. But keep them around. We have a nice image of my teacher there. Uh, Anton from Moscow helped us to make it. And uh, so it's nice to have your teacher's face around. There's a Tsongkhapa over here. And... Uh, there's a Tsongkhapa here, and some of my teachers are here. So uh, keep, keep images around, keep books around, little stupas, okay? Uh, the pictures represent Buddha, the books represent Dharma. Sorry, the stupas are Buddha, mind, body, mind, and speech. In, in Tibet language, we don't say altar, we say uh, the place where Buddha's body, speech, and mind live. Okay, so body is uh, image. Speech is you keep a book there, like Jing Kan Jing. And then mind is you keep a small stupa there. And then that's a good altar. It has three things, body, speech, and mind, okay? Uh, so during this meditation, you can just think about part of retreat is to make plans for after you get home. Okay? Part of the experience of retreat is to make plans for when you get out of retreat. Okay? So I I when I do retreats I keep a journal. I always bring an empty journal. And maybe in the evening uh, I sit down with my hot chocolate and I write if I have good ideas, you know, like, oh, I need a Buddha over my, my front door, or something like that, then I make a note, because I will forget when I get on the airplane, you know, I'll forget everything. So, keep a journal. You shouldn't talk during these retreats, any retreat, you shouldn't talk. Uh, even if you're staying with other people, try not to talk. Someone talks to you, just go like this. Okay, don't talk back. All right, and uh, it's a, it helps the retreat. I did, I don't know, many, many, many re one-month retreats, 
during my business career. And uh, the first time I felt a little bit nervous, I thought, oh, uh, I will, my business will get worse. You know, if I go away for one month, then my business will get worse, you know. I was worried about it. And I waited for a long time. Then I finally I did my first retreat in a bedroom next to my Lama's bedroom. And I stayed in the bedroom for one month. And uh, some other monk brought me food and stuff like that. And then uh, when I came out, I had all these ideas about uh, ACIP, to create ACIP, to save all the books. And now it's 31 years, right? So uh, you don't waste your time in retreat, OK? Uh, it feels like you are going to get behind in your work. All the other people will get the good position. And your work will be worse, or something like that. But what I learned was all my cool ideas came during Lerum, during retreat, one month retreat. So. I encourage you to do it, and, and bring a journal with you when you do this retreat, okay? Don't forget, okay? Uh, let's look at the schedule, uh, okay? We talked about Monday already. Then uh, Tuesday, 7 in the morning, do the first part of this book, okay? And I told you, you don't have to finish it. It's pretty long, okay? Do it for half an hour. Mark where you stop. And you're welcome to stop if you find something cool. Like, oh, I want to do a lot of extra offerings. Or, I had a bad week and I want to do a lot of confessions. Then you can stop and do a lot of confessions. Okay? You fit the book to you and not you to the book. Okay? If you need more confession time, take more confession time. If you need more rejoicing time, take rejoicing time. Okay. Then 7.30 on Tuesday, you're going to do the first... Uh, let me see how many parts there are. You're going to do the first five meditations. Okay? in here, first five, okay? You can pick, it's only 45 minutes, the first session, so you can pick something from the first five, okay? Then uh, you do your own yoga, and then you eat, and then important is 10, 15 to 11. When you do retreat, you have to take rest time, okay? Don't be like Scott or Reed, work all day, all night, okay? You have to take a break. It makes you smarter, okay? So take a nice break. No responsibilities, no guilt. Just goof off. Don't do anything. Don't think about Dharma, okay? Think about everything else, okay? But take a just take a nice break, okay? Don't feel guilty. All these Dharma people feel guilty if they take a break, okay? It's a big part of Dharma that you learn to relax, okay? And take some time off, okay? Then when you come back, your practice will be much better, okay? But if you never take a break, your practice will get worse and worse, okay? Uh, 11 o'clock, the second part of this book, okay? Called Thousand Angels, okay? So kappa prayer, do that. And then uh, you do the second five meditations. Something from meditation six to number 10, okay? You choose. Then you take a break. You can do a little bit of stretching. You can walk a little bit, okay, walk around. Uh, 12.30 to 1.30 is is one long hour, just mantra, okay? You can do that Tsongkhapa mantra in your own language, okay? If you prefer, okay? Yeah. 
Uh, you can do it out loud, you can do it silently, but, but they say a loud whisper is ideal. Okay. Loud whisper. Okay. Then the spirits can hear you. Okay. Uh, it's on Kapa Mantra, right? Um, what's I going to say? Mm, it's not a waste of time, okay? I used to think mantras were a waste of time. I didn't want to do mantras. I just wanted to study books. My teacher forced me to do retreat. My teacher took all my books away. Say, just do mantras. I said, it's boring. I don't want to just do mantras. But it's powerful and it works. And now I believe it. Okay? Uh, just do mantras. Don't look at anything. And see where your mind goes. Okay? And uh, it works. Okay? It's a very good practice. Jo, right? Jo. Jo. It's a very good practice. Okay? It seems like superstition or something. It's not. It's very, very good for you. Okay? So just do mantras. Your mind, don't try to control your mind. Uh, during the mantras, uh, what I'd like you to think about is people who helped you in your life. Okay? Just long list of people who helped you in your life. You know? The first day you will say, geshe I can't do that for an hour because there's only five people. Okay? Then start a list, okay? Keep a paper. Every time you think of someone who helped you a lot, write it down. Then by the end of the three days, you will have two or three hundred people there who helped you a lot. But you never think about them, okay? So keep a list. It's a very good practice. Keep a list, you know, my mother carried me for nine months and almost died to give me my life. Okay, number one. <laughs> and then... Uh, you will find two or three hundred, and it's a beautiful practice, and it makes you a very nice person. It makes you a good person, okay? So just think about people who helped you since you were a kid, okay? Or since when you were a dot inside your mom, okay? Mm. Then 1.30 to 2.30, you can take a walk outside. Uh, there's a rule about walking in retreat. What's the first rule? No, don't go outside of the boundary. Okay? So there's a retreat boundary. Don't go outside of the retreat boundary. Uh, yeah, second rule, wear a hat. Okay, I had the pleasure in the last few years because I used to surf. I was in the sun all day. I got, this got cut off here. Okay, big cut, and here I got a big cut. It's a skin cancer, okay, from sun. Okay, so you don't want it. It's not fun. They cut deep. They have to cut it out, okay. So don't, so wear a hat, okay. Don't be a tough guy. And uh, cover your arms, okay, cover your hands. I'm getting there, okay. Number one. Number two, wear some sunscreen, you know, put it on. Don't be stupid, okay? Wear it, okay? Don't be a tough guy, okay? Everybody I know who doesn't wear it got skin cancer, okay? So don't do that. Uh, and drink lots of water, okay? Drink a lot of water, take water with you, okay? If you get lost, you're going to need water, okay? You can't survive in this desert for more than a day or a day and a half without water. It's not possible, okay? You need water. Don't get lost, okay? Uh, don't go where you cannot see a building, okay? Don't go someplace where you cannot see a building. I got lost here, and I, I helped to build all these buildings, okay? So it's possible. So be careful. Stay, stay on the road, okay? And uh, keep a building in sight, okay? All right? Agree? Okay. Uh, then 2.30, have a light snack. Don't eat too much, okay? Uh, I got some nice instruction from Anatole. Some of you know Anatole. He, he gave me some eating instructions recently, and uh, it was very helpful for me. And maybe we can talk about it. it it's a Buddhist diet. You know, you can eat something 
vegetarian and healthy. And it's very light. I lost a lot of weight, like, I don't know, six kilos, seven kilos. And uh, it's very good for your health. So uh, maybe I'll teach you after the retreat, okay? It's very helpful. And it's healthy. And it's vegetarian, okay? All right. Uh, so don't eat too much, because you can't meditate if you eat too much, okay? Uh, 3 to 3.45, the next part of the meditations, which is 11 to 15, okay? Meditations 11 to 15, okay? Pick one or two. Focus on those. Then 3.45 to 4.15, there's a joke. Uh, some yoga teacher had a joke. Uh, when you feel tired from sitting in meditation too long, you have two choices. You can do some yoga stretches or you can eat chocolate. <laughs> and uh, the yoga stretches don't make you fat. Okay. <laughs> the yoga stretches are good for you. Okay. Uh, then 4.15 to 5.15, uh, you can do walking meditation, do mantra. Oh, by the way, if you're walking and you meet somebody, the tradition is to look down and don't look at them. Just pretend they're not there. Okay, don't go like... <laughs> okay. There was a linguist that came, I think after your guys' three-year retreat, they wanted to study how you communicate like this, you know. <laughs> That's a whole new language, you know. They're like... So that's the same as talking, really, okay? So don't do it, okay? It's a custom just to look down and keep walking, okay? Uh, and don't talk. Obviously, you shouldn't turn on your cell phone the whole time, okay? Just turn it off and put it away. And you can take it out when you get back, okay? When you start again, okay? So in the first few retreats of this Lam Rim series, we took away people's cell phone and laptop. Then one day some lady said her laptop's missing. We spent two days looking for her laptop. We couldn't find it. And then I, I think she thought we stole it. And then she went home and she found it in her bathroom. Uh, then we stopped taking people's laptops. Uh, if you want a good retreat, turn it off, put it away, okay? okay. If you don't want a good retreat, use it. And, it, you know, you're all over 16 years old, I think. Katie? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're all adults. I'm just telling you, if, if you think you have some important computer thing to do during the three days, you will have a lousy retreat. The retreat won't help you much, okay? Put it away, you know. Put away the computer. Put away the phone. Just do it, okay? And I can't... I may spy on you. I do that. I'm good at it uh, in the retreat. But I can't be in your house, you know? So it's up to you. It's up to you. What do you want from this retreat? If you don't want a very deep retreat, then do some computer work or, or do some texting, okay? Look at WeChat. WeChat is the retreat destroyer machine. Okay? WeChat is retreat destroyer machine. Okay? You, you know, so, so please, I mean, I really, really encourage you just to give it up, okay? Try it. You will have a good time. You will enjoy it. Why did we build a retreat center in this god-awful place of rocks and sun? It's because it's one of the last places in the United States where cell phone coverage doesn't cover. Really, okay? And it's, it's like two hours to the grocery store, right? So uh, don't waste our time, you know? We, we put the retreat center here so you wouldn't use your cell phone. Now the cell phone towers are chasing us. 
in uh, some places, I know where they are, you can get cell phone reception. In my outhouse, you can get <laughs> cell phone reception. Okay, but uh, just forget it. Okay, it's up to you what kind of retreat you want. Okay, and I'm talking also to the older students. The older students are as bad as the new students. They're like, I'm special. I don't, I'm older student. I'm special. I can use computer. Just forget it. Okay? It's a disease of older Dharma students. I'm so advanced, I can use laptop during retreat. Forget it. Okay? It's wrong. Okay? All right. Uh, all right. So mantras at 4.15, walking around if you want. But you just had a walk, so it should be okay. Dinner at 5.15, don't eat too much. Because you get very tired in the evening. 6.15, uh, do the Thousand Angels from the middle of this book. If you don't have this book, buy one. If you don't have this book, buy one. If you don't have this book, buy one. If you don't have any money, we'll give it to you, okay? But don't go into retreat without this. You want to hear a Tibetan joke? Uh, so there was a war. A war in Tibet means three people attack two people or something like that, okay? <laughs> they didn't have very good wars. Then, uh, so this guy uh, heard there was a war. So he, he got his gun, his rifle, and he started to walk to East Tibet, you know, to fight with somebody. And then uh, on the way, he had to poo-poo. And he asked the farmer, can I use your outhouse? And he went in the outhouse and he uh, put his gun down and he made a poo-poo. And then he left, but he forgot his gun. And then just after that, he met the two enemy guys. And he reached for his gun. And it was gone. And then he's so scared he made a poo poo. <laughs> so they say, what? He left his gun where he shitted, and he shitted where he should have had his gun. Or something like that. <laughs> okay? And it's a Tibetan joke for. Uh, What's the joke for? Uh, don't forget your gun. <laughs> okay. When you go to Dharma War, you got to have your gun. Okay? This is your gun. Okay? These three pairs. This is the gun. Kyakpa Tangsa La Menda Le. Menda Gyasa La Kyakpa Le. It sounds better in Tibetan. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, okay, 8.15, you do, uh, what are we up to? 21 to? Do the next five. <laughs> do the next five. Choose something from the next five. Is it the fifth set? Yeah, the fourth set. Oh, I'm talking about, yeah, you're right. Okay, after dinner, fourth set of five meditations. Uh, 750, just do, multiply times five, okay? Do the next five. Don't try to do all five, you don't have time. Pick one, okay? Pick the one that's most sexy to you, okay? Uh, 815, pick another five, okay? And then nine o'clock, when I did my three-year retreat, I, I stayed in a yurt for three years. I think the yurt is still there. I think we should take it down, to be honest. And uh, maybe I can help or something. Uh, I think we should just take down all the things that are not being used, because they don't, they make the place look trashy or something. Uh, so anything we're not using, you know, that's falling apart, we should just, we should make the place clean, you know. It's like having junk in your house. Um, anyway, uh, it's very, very nice to do mantras under the stars. So you can take a chair outside and just look at the sky 
and watch the stars. And uh, I know, especially in China, you, oftentimes you can, can, cannot see the stars. In, in Phoenix, where I grew up, you cannot see the stars because of the city light. So uh, I think it's very good for your uh, spiritual life if you enjoy the stars. The Kala Chakra Tantra says that, okay? So, uh, you know, spend some time, enjoy the stars here. Okay, go outside, w dress warm. The desert gets very cold at night, as you know. It changes how many degrees? 30 degrees, 40 degrees. So you have to, a good meditator in the desert has lots of layers, you know? They have t-shirt, then they have a shirt, then they have an overshirt, <laughs> then they have a sweater, then they have a shawl. And when it, in the morning they have everything. Then at 10 o'clock they take off the shawl. <laughs> and at 11 o'clock they take off the sweater. And 12 o'clock they take off the shirt. <laughs> you know, and then they put it back on at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So, so that's, the, that's how people meditate. Don't get cold on the floor meditating. Okay? Make sure you don't get cold. That's not good for you, okay? Uh, <coughs> I forgot to mention, you know, as you know, but I'm going to say it again, there are snakes here in the desert, and they are poisonous, okay? They're called rattlesnake. They have these two teeth. They have an injection. Uh, poison, okay? Serious poison. So, uh, so you have to be careful not to step on them. They are peaceful. They don't want to, you are too big to eat. They use the poison to kill small animals. And, to, and then they eat them. The jaw goes on. And, uh, but they, when they see a human, they don't want to hurt you, because that's a waste of their energy. They cannot eat you, so they will not hurt you. And, and they will give you warning. It's called, it sounds like, can anybody do it? They have a little thing on their tail. They go, <laughs> and if you hear it, stop. Don't walk. And find out where are they. And then just turn around and go the other way. OK, don't say, oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I think 90% of people who get bitten are trying to play with them, or they're trying to push them. or OK, so it's very rare they will bite you. We had, uh, in my three-year retreat, we had many, many snakes. One night I had five around my, in, inside my fence. And they won't hurt you, but uh, don't step on them, okay? And they, they're hard to see. So look where you put your feet, okay? Like don't step over a rock or a log. You cannot see what's on the other side, okay? All right, so be careful with them. If you get bit or if you have an emergency, make a lot of noise and someone will come and help you, okay? We had one person in our retreat got bit uh, on her finger right here, you know, and uh, she had to go to the hospital, so try not to. I think so far we've been pretty lucky. Yeah, But I don't want you to be the first one, okay? Uh, and that's part of having a retreat center in a wild place. We can have the retreat center in the city, and you can't have a good retreat, because it's too noisy. There's too many cars, and too much energy. When you go to the country, you have animals. And you have to share your space, because they were here first. Okay, so we have to respect their rights also. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Wednesday, get up a little bit earlier, okay? So you have to watch your schedule. I moved it earlier every day. And uh, don't eat before your first meditation. Just have some tea. Don't have, if you can, stop black, stop black tea, stop coffee during the three days, okay? It's not good for your meditation, okay? Uh, then do the Georgia, the first part from here. Then go back to the first five meditations. Maybe choose a different one, okay? Then do your yoga. Then a light breakfast. Then goof off very well. 
then do the second part of this with the next five meditations. Okay, choose. Same schedule, okay? Uh, for Wednesday. Thursday, uh, same schedule in the morning up until 10.45 and then we'll start, right Melissa? We'll start bringing you back to the temple, okay? And then you can have, uh, at 11.30 we'll do a short ceremony to open the boundaries, okay? And before you come down on the bus, you have to take the boundary markers off of your cabin, okay? Why? They block traffic, okay? <laughs> spirits cannot move, good spirits, bad spirits, nobody can move. It's like stop signs everywhere. So if they really work, they're for real, they really stop spirits, and they're irritated, they don't like them because they can't go everywhere, okay? So it's important to take them off of your cabin. Take them off the opposite way that you put them up, okay? First one in front of your door, the side of your front door, take that one off first. Then go to the right. So if, if this is my door, I will take that one off first. Then I will take this one off. The opposite of how I put them on. Then I'll take this one off, and then I'll take that one off, okay? What do you do with them? They are like scripture. They have holy words on them. One of your refuge vows is to treat anything with holy words on it as Buddha's speech, okay? So don't throw them in the garbage, okay? I like to keep them in my house, you know? Then I look at them sometimes. Oh, that was 1985. Grand Canyon retreat, that was a good one, you know. And I like to keep them, you know. There's kind of good luck for people who are sick or something. When you get home, you can give them to a sick person, put it on their bed or something, and it's good for them, okay? It has a good energy. All right, then uh, after that, we'll take a group photo, so don't forget, try to look beautiful at 11.45 on Thursday, then you can go back to normal at 12. Okay, so try to dress nice, okay, uh, for the photograph, okay? And then we'll have some more classes, okay? Mm. We cut this retreat by one day because we had a special event uh, after it. Uh, which was canceled, <laughs> but it was too late to change it. So it was the second term at the college, but we made the terms longer and we made less terms, okay? So sorry about that. All right, um, let's go. What time do we stop, Tim? 8.45. 8.30. Well, I was going to give you questions, but I talked too much, which is usual. So, let's do some scripture, okay? Uh, uh, Nick, I'm on uh, M-I-D-A-N-G-M-I. Mida Mimin. Yeah, that's it. Let's go there, okay? This is one of the benefits of taking refuge. Okay, ready? Hang in there, you got 45 minutes. Let's use the time. This is part of meditation number thirteen. Okay, which means uh, if you're if you're taking refuge regularly, 
if you're using the four steps regularly, then spirits can't harm you much. And people cannot harm you much. Okay? Why? Just always go back to the second husband. Okay? Because you understand where they're coming from. So they get less. You know? Shanti Deva complained. I don't like this four steps. His teacher said, why? He said, I don't have any enemies to be patient with. It just gets less and less every week. You know, I don't like this system. How am I supposed to become more patient if I don't have any enemies? You know, <laughs> okay? It will get less and less, okay? Mina miminki nepe kyang mitsukte mute lungshak jupe nangbe genyan shinu shila lungshak pangkyang lakma nyepatang uh, so there's a demon who uses a special power called Lung Shak. Lung means uh, what? Wind. Shakpa means uh, lasso, like a cowboy in a rodeo, okay, uh, to catch things with a rope, okay. And uh, if he puts this on you, you, you start to have sickness and things like that, okay. So there was a there was some bad guy chasing a, a Buddhist uh, Ganyan lifetime layman's vow person, and he was chasing him with this uh, special noose, trying to cause him trouble. Lakmanyepa means uh, he couldn't pull it off. It's an idiom in Tibetan. Okay, he he couldn't get get it. It, the noose didn't work on the, on the guy, okay? The spirit couldn't hurt him. You want to hear the whole story? Yeah. Uh, I found it, okay? Mutek uh, Nungshang, this is by someone named Kurt, Kirti Rinpoche. Mutek Nungshang Drupe Tamni, here's the story of the guy who tried to catch the Buddhist with his noose, okay? Uh, there was a non-Buddhist guy, mean guy, uh, Dupe, and he reached some kind of special bad powers. Lungi Shapa Sarwe Shapa Shikchin, and that bad spirit gave him this special magic rope. Okay. De Kamla Tapkyang Wangdu Min Dua Mepa Shikin. If he catches you with that rope, you have to do what he says. You can't refuse, okay? Nobody, okay? Lanchi chiba shigla tape te wang du madu. Then he saw a, a mother with a small child in her arms, and he thought, I will take control of the child. So he put the rope over the child's head. But uh, it didn't work. Okay, the rope didn't work. Shakpa de dekse chiwe chiba de la dekyan mushi. Up to that time, every person he put the rope on died. He killed them. But he put the rope on the kid and nothing happened. Okay? Then, ona lung shaki nuba nyam sam nyam ne. Then this bad guy started to think. Maybe my magic rope lost its power. Okay? Ki shik pa dekbe. So he, he saw uh, a dog and he put the rope around the dog's neck. Dema tak shiwe. And immediately the dog died. So he said, okay, so my rope is okay. It's, it's not a, what do you call it? Malfunction rope. Lung shak in nipa manyam ba tope. Then he thought, this kid must have some kind of magic power. Uh, then he asked, uh, I forget, it doesn't say who he asked. Uh, yeah, anyway, maybe he asked the Buddha or something. You know, what's so special about this kid? This kid has no other powers. When he was very young, he had an idea of taking refuge. Okay? This kid took refuge once. 
correctly. Okay? So, it's not going to work. Your rope won't work on him. Okay? So it means if you take refuge, they can't hurt you. Okay? Uh, and the story ends, the bad guy became a good Buddhist. Okay? Gyagana, Gyagana Michi da Gyalvotim Pogde Dirtu de Bowana. Then uh, in uh, India, they didn't bury people, they just threw them in a field, burial ground. And they didn't bury them under the ground, they just throw the dead body in this field, okay? And then that became a very frightening place because animals would come to eat the bodies, you know, like dangerous animals would come to eat the bodies at night. So it used to be a punishment. Like, if somebody stole something and the king wanted to punish them, they make them stay in that field the whole night. Okay? Dutu du porwana, shen shen ma dutu de kiwa tamje de nubne min mi min shasa tabu kya de sandroa. Then, generally, anybody they threw in that field would be carried away by evil spirits, okay, and killed and eaten. Chikyang dapa miyong. Nobody survived. Kuk gendengi napse tsel na shik chiwa shagne kyamdo che pe mi mingi nupa matsupa. Then he found a little piece of uh, somebody's robe, this Buddhist robe, in the graveyard. He found this little piece. He put it on his head. Then he said, I take refuge in Buddha, I take refuge in Dharma, a whole night. And the uh, spirits couldn't touch him. Okay? Then you guys don't believe in spirits, and I'm sorry, but they exist and they cause a lot of trouble. Okay? Uh, and it's not some kind of superstition. There's a joke in hell that the greatest thing that demons have done in this world in the last couple hundred years is make people think they don't exist. <laughs> That's their best accomplishment in this world, <laughs> okay? It's kind of funny. All right, they, they're very, what do you call them? Happy about that. They don't believe in us up there. So we can do whatever we want. Okay. Then there was a nomad, sheep herder in Tibet. And uh, he was sleeping outside, and one night a bear caught him. We have bears here also. You don't want to meet them, okay. And Sheila uh, Kedeche almost killed him, okay. If you see a bear, just turn around and walk the other way, okay. Just turn around. Don't go running because they like it, okay. Just back up and walk away, okay. Hi. Bye. Uh, I think there's not any right now around. Okay. Don't worry. Chi ne go maror somala. But, and he got a terrible scar on his face from the bear attack. Okay. Lama shiki degyu chipana. And one lama asked him, why you have this scar on your face? You know. Ko logyu shepe. And he told the lama the story. Oh, I was sleeping and a bear caught me in. Then Lama came to Mengak Then the Lama said, Next time, try doing the refuge. Okay? Sangye Chodan, Soke Chodan, Chanju Padu, Dane Kyansuchi. That's refuge, okay? Probably he sang it so bad that the bear ran away. I don't know. Uh, he taught him to do the prayer. Chi Shi Yang Kyar Chedan took cup. Then he ran into another bear later. Kyamdo Chepe. He did the Sange Chodan, Soke Chodan, okay? And the de Na Nom Sam Chene, Min Chi Sam Yang Matsor Wasongwa. Then the bear was smelling to find him. Sometimes the wild animals here find you by smell. They cannot find you. They don't have good eyes. So they're like, but he couldn't uh, find him. And he just left. Okay? 
One time I met a deer in the forest. I was doing retreat and uh, we just both stopped. I stopped, he stopped, you know, and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him, you know. Then I thought, let's see how he likes mandala offering. So I said, Sashi Puki Josh. Because in the Buddhist scripture it says they like songs, you know, and I sang him the mandala and he was like, and he stayed through the whole mandala. It was a very beautiful, quiet moment in the forest, and he's just like, you know, they like it. Animals like singing, and everybody likes mandala. Okay. Uh, what time did I start? 8.30. 8.15? Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to keep going, okay? I know you're tired, so am I. Let's just keep going. Kim Dak Gunme Sejin, Ki Kyamdo Sik Sam Tun Shindu, Semo Dutu, to Song in Lam Tong Shing, Mima Yinki Nupa Chama Nula, Mutek Pe Hate Shila Chak Sane, Nyambe Lo Gyutadang. So there was uh, a Buddhist named Anata Pindara. Who is that? Yeah. He bought, he, he bought the park for the Buddha, where the Buddha taught the diamond cutter, okay? Anatta means people who have nobody to help them. Pindada means gives them food. His name is Mr. Gives Food to People Who Have Nobody to Help Them. That's his name, Anatta Pindada, okay? Then uh, he learned how to say Sangye Chodan Soke No Nam Na, okay, in Sanskrit. I don't know what it is, but he learned how to say it. Senmur Dutu to Songwe Lam Tongshing, and he was stuck in a dangerous burial ground at night, and because he recited the Sangye Chodan Soke No Nam, he could see a path through the graveyard, and he got away. Mima Yingi Nipa Chama Nipa, the spirits couldn't hurt him. Okay. Then one day he uh, prostrated to a, a stupa, non-Buddhist stupa, okay, and he lost that power. Okay. Nyambe love you. Okay. Yang gelon shikla shenki repua kume tongne semo kurwe. This is a cute story. Uh, so there was a, a, what do you call it? a monk, and someone gave him a cloth to make new robes. Okay? And then a, a robber saw him carrying the cloth home. Then the robber came at night to steal the cloth. Then the monk was kind of strong and he caught him. Lakpak uh, yik means he tied his hands. And koinjo sunki tsene mute, yukpe lensin de gyabe. Then he took a big stick and he said, uh, I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. And he beat him each time, one time. So he got hit on the head three hard times. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Okay. him to Gebe. Kumade, Chirde. And then the thief ran away. You know, he's got three bumps on his head. And, uh, me my ambiguous samba shigi octo, uh, not gelongi jebba kyarjin. Then he went and hid under a bridge, and that bridge at night was used by many bad spirits. It was a highway for bad spirits at night. So, actually, a very dangerous place to stop, but he didn't know that. So, he went to the bridge, he hid under the bridge. And these very dangerous spirits are coming and going on the bridge. Then he was 
talking to himself. You know, he said, that monk, he hit me three times. He said, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, you know, they assume they may but top leg. I'm glad there's only three jewels. Uh, <laughs> If there was more than three jewels, he would have killed me. <laughs> and he just said it quietly to himself. He said, I don't know, he's yelling Buddha, he's yelling Dharma Sangha. Then because he's repeating those three words, the spirits couldn't touch him. Otherwise they would kill him. But he kept saying to himself, stupid monk, was Buddha, Dharma, what do you say, Buddha? Then the spirits couldn't hurt him because he's saying this good word. Okay, <laughs> kind of funny. Sambe and de mima him begin my new And the words also caused a traffic jam on the bridge because the spirits couldn't go past it. So they got really upset with him because uh, they can't go past the place where someone's reciting Buddha Dharma Sangha. Okay. All right, this Rang Rayang Kela Tugna Jigta Michampar. So then he gets serious and he says, People like us, if you get into a really dangerous situation, okay, somebody's pointing a gun at you or something, okay, I don't know. It happened to me a, another time, you know, somebody had a gun, they were going to shoot me. And, uh, you know, that moment, somebody's got the gun at you, you know. Then at that moment he says, don't get freaked out, don't worry. You've got refuge, okay? Lo Deng. Lo Deng means you have a Dharma insurance policy. Okay, Deng means insurance, like guarantee or insurance, okay? Lo Deng, Koenjo La Tede. Just think of the Buddha Dharma Sangha, okay? And kebne chik chok chene kyasado go. And stick to that, those three Buddha Dharma Sangha, and you don't have to worry. Okay? So it's good to have it ready. Ngen Songi Kewa Dopa Ang, Pak the King, Nge Be Sai Pushiki, Chikar Gyajin, Na Kyab Chuwana, De Kyab Manu Pasangi, Na Shu, Sangi Ki Kyamdo Damba Temba Shin, Sai Bi Kyamdo Che Pashindu. She. Nyanzongi kewa dopa ang. Also, it can stop you from going to a lower rebirth. Pak to king nepe hai pu shiki. There was a young man living in the lands of the devas, okay? Worldly gods. And they have a, a thing that just before they die, they can see where they're going. They're called Kapsumba sometimes. And one of the most famous prayers of Tsongkhapa is called Kapsumba. Kapsumba means uh, three, th three times. They can see where they are now, they can see where they came from, and they can see where they're going. Okay? It's a, it's a synonym for Deva. Uh, three timers. Okay? Uh, so, their suffering is very great because they can see where they're going to go after they die. Okay? And he saw he's going to be born as a pig. So he went to, he took refuge in the chakra, which is like Indra, okay? And uh, who, who themselves is in samsara, okay? They're just in a better samsara for a while. They uh, kept my new part, but he, Indra knew he couldn't help protect him. So Indra went to the Buddha and said, can you help this guy? He's praying to me, I don't have the power to help him. Okay. Sangye ki kyamdu dhamba temba shin. Then the Buddha came and taught about taking refuge to the young deva. And hai bhyu kyamdu che shin dushi. And then, uh, the deva, young deva, young god, he died taking refuge. Okay. Jesu Gyajin, the Kandike Duk Tapana. Then Chakra decided to check where was he reborn. Okay. 
this powerful God want to check where was he reborn. Tlan nam ki rang se sem ki ne obmanam tongla goma mi tong. And he couldn't find him in all the realms of the universe. Okay? He checked the whole universe and he couldn't find him. Because it's the nature of people at those high levels that they can only see the people below them. They can't see the people above them. You see what I mean? Ne open nam tongla goma mi tongwe chuchin yinbe de ma tongni sangye lo shubar. Then Chakra asked Lord Buddha, where is this guy? I can't find him. I, I don't see where he was reborn. Then Buddha said, uh, he's busy. He's in Tushita. He went to Tushita, okay? And that's above your place, so you can't see him, okay? So he was supposed to be born as a pig, but he died with the Buddha's name on his lips, so he was born in Tushita, okay? Modern people don't believe in Tushita, they don't believe they can be a pig, they don't believe in all... Okay, I'm sorry. Not only was he not born as a pig, he was born in this divine realm. Then Pabanka Rinpoche said, I taught you guys every single class. You start with Sangye Chang Tongki Chang Namla. He says, I'm trying to help you. Okay? I want it burned into your brain. Okay? Because if you just think of it when you're dying, you won't go down. Okay? He said, I just that's why I told you you have to do this prayer every single class. Okay? Sangye Chang Tongki Chang Namla. Okay, you ready? In the monastery. Heart Sutra. Okay? <laughs> and they don't think about it once. They recite 21 in a row before the debates. And it's amazing. Nobody's listening to it at all. It's amazing. I mean, some people probably. Okay. But don't get in this bad habit before uh, class. Somebody starts a Sangye Chodan and you're just like, uh, okay. Think about the meaning. Okay. What's the meaning of the mandala before class? Sashi, Poki, Joshi, Metoda. What's the meaning? Yeah, offering a perfect world. It means uh, when the people put their hands like this, you're supposed to imagine a world where everybody is using the four steps. Everybody. Whole world. Okay? Every businessman is trying to make other businessmen successful. Every country is trying to make other countries successful, okay? Everybody who wants a cute girlfriend is trying not to hurt other people's relationship, okay? And then the whole world is like heaven, okay? Because the whole world's using the fort. So the whole world is taking refuge. So when you do the mandala, just think about it, okay? This is uh, DCI reached, I don't know, Africa. And everybody's using the four steps, okay? Like, think like that, okay? Don't waste your time, okay? Offer a perfect world. That's the meaning of mandala, okay? Mandala means a world where everybody's taking refuge, okay? Uh, I got the whole story from the Kangir. It's not that interesting. So I'm not going to spend the time, okay? It's pretty long. 
And uh, if you want to, I'll give it to you. You can try to translate it. Uh, it's pretty long. Okay. It's called the uh, story of the the story of the wild pig. Okay. It's a sutra. It's long. And the story is in there. Okay. Uh, last thing. Okay. I still got eight minutes, right, Tim? Swabava sokitse gom sam dok ki mik tsum tsum ki sob che. Bani. Okay. Om subhava jura sabe dama subhava jura han dama ni do gyo dama nga na yam na nun na na me ali mi nga gyo kisi mi gyo ni ali tope ya shin kya chawin na do amma kama amma tama hun nam le tu tinga lam mam pam tam fam nam le mang. Yiki de da ki zamba dung yo me ba wai to bin nang ki na nam shin. Okay, this is some tantric, deep tantric thing, okay? And you're supposed to go like this, you know. Okay, uh, then Pabonka is making fun of those guys. Okay, he says, all oh, those guys, tantric college, you know. They, they are pretend to be having this deep meditation. They're hoping the sponsor is looking at them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> not everybody, okay? It's just possible. I'm not saying... Some of them really are having tantric experience. I believe that. But it's possible some are not serious, okay? Possible. I'm not saying all the monks are like that. They're not. Those monasteries are the most blessed place on the earth. Okay? And what's happening there is unbelievable. And everybody should try it. There's no place like that in the world. Okay? But there are some fake guys. <laughs> okay? I think so. Anyway, he said that. Make tsum tsum sobche. Make tsum tsum means like this. With your eyes, you know. And then sobche uh, means uh, fake it. Z-O-B. Just look for Z-O-B space. Space Z-O-B, you got it. Uh, space Z-O-B. There you go. Subchepani, Nangbe Jungo Dang Nyan Songi Kyawa Dope Tap Medu Chun Wakana Yumba Shepe Rang Tap Temba Yen. Nangbe Jungo Dang Nyan Songi Kyawa Dope Tap Medu Chun Wakana Yumba Shepe. You are demonstrating by your tantric practice that you don't understand how it is that you become a Buddhist. Okay? By this deep, deep tantric practice, you are showing, uh, say, kuk tak ten. Kuk tak ten. Kuk tak ten. My Lama used to tell it to me all the time. Uh, kuk means idiot. Uh, I taught you that, Shindukupa. Yeah, Kuk Tak Ten means uh, if you're a fool and you walk into a room of wise people, you're okay if you keep your mouth shut. They won't realize you're a fool. You see? So if you like walk into a room with a bunch of really great lamas, keep your mouth shut, you know, and maybe they think you're the same. Okay? But if you open your mouth and you start to talk, that's called uh, advertising your kukpa. <laughs> okay? Advertising your kukpa. Okay? So, Pabonku Rinpoche said, people who do this deep tantric practice, they are ringing bells and banging things, you know, wah, wah, you know. Uh, he said, kuk tak te, kuk tak te. You know, better you didn't say anything. We, we might have thought you were wise. <laughs> Got it? Okay. He said, you want to show you're intelligent? You want to show you're a real tantrika? You know, it's not with this... Bleh. All these American people, if somebody rings a bell and wears a special hat, they all run there and they give money and they take initiations, you know. It's funny. They don't even know the teacher. The teacher doesn't know them. They don't get their vows. 
they just pay some money. And they think, because the Lama's banging on things and say some strange words, they think, oh, this must be special, okay? Prabhupada Gurimpaje says, what's special is the second husband. Okay? That's a high tantrika. Okay? Come home, husband says, you're an idiot, and you go, you're... Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. That's okay. That's a tantrika. Okay, got it? They don't have this one, they're not ringing a bell, they don't have special, you know. It's amazing how many people get excited by bell and they're, they're ringing boom, 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 and wow, wow, wow. Oh, they must be very big llama, you know. And I'm not saying it, Pabonka is saying it, you know. Uh, Pabonka says, the wife who comes home and stops what she wa phantom, stops to call her husband stupid, that's a tantric. That's a tantrika. Not these big guys with the crowns and the bells and... Okay, really, really. That wife who comes home and understands the emptiness of her husband is more advanced. Okay, got it? She's more advanced. She's really practicing the root of Tantra. Okay, got it? That's very cool. And it's true, okay? It's true. Okay, we'll stop there. That's a cool place to stop, okay? If you stop yourself from hurting someone who hurt you because you realize you made them. You're a high secret Buddhist. Okay? You are more advanced than all those tantric guys. Okay? Got it? All right. All right. Uh.